Delilah Falls was a place of majestic power. The thing I remember the most is the constant activity of the river. To me, it's a, a spiritual place. Uh, I, I spent time in these hills uh, playing with my brothers and my cousins. Uh, I used to skip rocks on the river. Celilo has been a popular fishing and trading location for more than 10,000 years making it one of the oldest continuously inhabited human settlements in the Americas. The area had about 480 fishing stations, frequented by nine confederated tribes. In 1805, Lewis and Clark passed through this area, deeming it the Great Falls of the Columbia. This was a world-known trading spot all the years before. People came from, when Montana would come up, bring buffalo hides, they'd take salmon home. When Lewis and Clark came, there were salmon stacks, tons of it. Commercial, cultural, religious gathering place uh, of, of tribal people. All the tribes would bring the resources from their area to this great, huge trading place. The primary resource provided by Celilo Falls was salmon. It served as the foundation of the indigenous people's diet and economy. Salmon also played an integral role in the culture and the way of life of the tribes of the Columbia River. Salmon is and was important to all the rivers that, along the Columbia because it represented not what I think is a commodity, but rather as a resource of, of food that was dependable. It was here that Native Americans caught the giant Chinook and other salmon during the busy fishing seasons, which lasted up to eight months each year. People from the Umatilla Indian Reservation came down during those times uh, to fish uh, for commercial reasons, to fish for subsistence reasons. Fishermen used long-handled dip nets to catch salmon and even built wooden scaffolds over the falls. But after millennia of culture and tradition, the Celilo way of life would be forever changed. To make a million acres bloom anew, to build an industrial empire from the wasted power of the Columbia. My father saw the planted the Dallas Dam in the Chamber of Commerce and he tried to warn the Indians. They didn't believe him. They throwed us off, throwed a lot of people off from the fishing village and just blamed them about each other when in reality the United States had already planned on building these dams. The tribes vigorously opposed the building of the dam, but to no avail. The following year, the Dalles Dam began operation. On the morning of March 10, 1957, the gates of the giant hydroelectric dam closed, blocking the Columbia River. Members of the Yakima, Warm Springs, and Umatilla tribes watched from the bluffs overlooking the falls as the waters backed up behind the dam 
swallowing their homes and fishing grounds. Six hours later, Celilo Falls had vanished beneath the waters. My dad took me out of school and I saw the water flow up, cover the falls, it was a really sad day. Natives of Celilo were forced to relocate and many families left their former homes to look for jobs. Tribes scattered, leaving the area nearly deserted. There was an extremely noticeable vacuum of what were the tribes to do, and the tribes uh, had to fight for and retain their fishing rights on the Columbia. Those who wished to remain near the site of the old village relocated to an area on higher ground beneath the bluffs. The housing was supposed to be temporary, but it would stay, stay for almost another 50 years before tribal leaders and government officials reached an agreement as to what would constitute fair compensation for the loss of a way of life. The houses they built were prefab government houses and the sewers backed up. They're substandard now. Uh, there's the water, is, uh, no, no water pressure on the east end of the village here, so it's really bad. In 2003, tribal leaders and the Army Corps of Engineers agreed to a $12.5 million settlement. It was the largest cultural reparation settlement in U.S. history. Its first result was the construction of a new longhouse, a building in which the people of Celilo can gather to hold ceremonies and celebrate their culture. Well, to date, we've um, designed and constructed the longhouse, and we have drilled a new water supply. Our general plan is to move into the uh, design of the uh, balance of the facilities at Celilo Village. Celilo Village uh, uh, needs to be respected. Uh, they need uh, to build an economy uh, that can help, help with the village. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done uh, here. The redevelopment of Celilo Village is the first ray of light to shine on the hopes that a shattered way of life can be reassembled. And when that does happen, and I do believe it will, because you can't stop God's way, the Creator's way. He created the falls. He wants it back. I know it. And so I'm waiting for someone to, to begin the legend. And it will be legendary when the roar is going over Celilo. I know one thing, dams are not permanent. There's a way that the force of the river will go under, over, or through it. Roll on.